God's great to see so many of you out here. It's terrific. But here we are again, women, knocking at the doors of justice and equality. Once more, begging, insisting, demanding that our voices be heard and that we're given the rights that we deserve. We oh. are before you. Years ago, women got together just to get the vote. Unfortunately, when we got it, many of you went home, many of them went home satisfied in the possible, not realizing that they would have to come again and make sure that there were women sitting in those seats to vote for them. We were here again years ago to make sure that women could enter the universities in the professions and the trades and do what they wanted to do. And even when the schools allowed them entry, the professions and the trades did not. And so back again they came, groups of them collected like this to make sure that they could access those roles just as men did. And then we came again to insist that once we were in the professions that we would be able to move through and take on leadership roles. I remember those wars. I remember those times. And you think that that would be over, and yet we had to come again to make sure that we got equal pay for equal work. But even while we were in those fights, even while we were designing those documents to write and to prove that we that our rights were being crushed. Even then, we did not always realize that there were hidden entries for some, that some women were being imposed upon in order to get through the door, that even some women who got through the door we're still being pressured to give not only their brains, not only their talent, but something else that no one has the right to demand. <laughs> and so we've collected here to make sure that everyone knows that we will not take it anymore. <laughs> so we have a long way to go. I mean, we're, we're sharing what we're going to do with our time and what our future holds. I'll tell you about mine in a moment. But we do have a long, long way to go. And we want to get there quickly. And I know it's customary for us to talk about packing our grip and making sure that we take all the right things behind. I'm going to ask you to unpack some of the more burdensome things that unfortunately we have collected in the past. I'm going to ask you to unpack the burden of divisions among us. I'm going to ask you to unpack the burden of sexuality that some of you I'm going to ask you to unpack the burden of racial difference and the racial And I'm going to ask you to unpack the burden of differences in social status. This time.
time, this time, we'll leave no woman behind. What does my future hold for me? Well, fortunately, I'm retired. <laughs> you know, the marvelous thing about being retired is that you can say directly what you want to say. <laughs> Unencumbered by the diplomacy and the double talk that almost hides your message. There are systems that have been regretting my retirement rather than celebrating it. I intend to be, continue to be outspoken because I have, I have grandchildren out there and I intend that by the time they reach adulthood, they'll live in a country that respects the rights of all of us. That values the contributions of women as well as men. And that sees that their color, their beliefs, their sexuality contributes to this society rather than detracts from it.